So for this week's podcast, the Joshua Sutherland podcast, we've got returning guest Mats Larson. Mats Larson is the author of the book, The Blind Guardians of Ignorance, COVID-19 Sustainability and Our Vulnerable Future. Invited Mats back because we're at the beginning of the year. And it's a time where a lot of people are setting goals for their professional life, their organization, but also their personal life. And with Matt's expertise in organizational change, and also what he views as a problematic future we might be moving into, we thought it great to invite him on to talk about goal setting, and in particular, to take a look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals which for people who are interested in sustainability could be a place in which they're going to be selecting their own goals for their organization. So first of all, welcome back, Matt. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Joshua. Uh, I'm doing fine. Great, great. So last time we spoke about Boris Johnson's 10-point plan for a, um, a green industrial revolution, and we thought we'd expand it out more to the world as a whole with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I guess, what are your thoughts on, on these goals? I, I, there's 17 in total, um, which seems like quite a lot. Yes. Um, the, uh, the 17 goals are very diverse. They cover almost all areas of of sustainability and improving the world. Um, they range from, from no poverty, zero hunger, uh, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, etc. Uh, to um, to the last one, which is partnerships for the goals, to, to build partnerships. And um, the um, the problem with with these goals, they're all, they're, they're all of course well intentioned, and uh, um, it's it's of course that there's nothing wrong with pursuing any of them, but in terms of uh, in terms of uh, um, functioning as guidelines for the transformation of countries. Or, or the entire world to a sustainable um, society and sustainable way of living, uh, they give too little guidance and they give too little focus. Almost anything that you could think of to um, um, undertake in a project or perhaps also in your personal life can be covered within one of these uh, uh, 17 goals. And the likelihood that any of the uh, the uh, um, activities that need to be undertaken would receive enough resources, uh, enough focus, in order to actually um, drive change in that area is very low. So there is a need for goals, but Goals need to be much more specific. They need to be much more, th there needs to be fewer goals so that, that more resources can be focused into each goal or into each area um, that's represented by the goal. For example, it's deemed, or well, electromobility is deemed to be a key aspect of the transformation. The, implementation of electro, electric vehicles and the, the increasing use of electric vehicles. And that needs to get or, or receive much more investment than is, uh, than is the case at present. So, um, and in, in his 10-point plan, uh, Boris Johnson has set aside 12 billion pounds sounds like a very large amount of money uh, for in order to um, promote these 10 different uh, goals um, but then we found we learned only a few days before christmas from toyota that they have calculated 
that the uh, transformation of Japanese trans transportation uh, uh, cars, trucks, buses to electromobility will require investments of 135 billion to 358 billion dollars in infrastructure, which indicates the tremendous amount of investment that will have to be made in um, power infrastructure, in power production, smart grid uh, technologies, and so on, in order to facilitate only one of the transformations that will become necessary. And having 10 goals, like the, the, the UK plan, uh, 10, 10 points uh, in the UK plan, um, with a, a total financing of $12 billion in a situation where, where there's a, such a tremendous need in, in if you um, uh, if you go by the, the figures presented by Toyota in order to only um, realize the uh, the transformation and the change to um, electromobility which which will require 50 or perhaps 100 times as much as the as is offered by by the 10 point plan uh, we get well, the, and the, because the, Japan Japan as a country so you mentioned the Toyota figures, which are for Japan as a country, which is um, the level of like electrified rail infrastructure over there is very high and people living in very dense cities. And um, you know, I used to live over there and uh, car usage, I suspect, is lower than in Britain. And it, it's, um, I suspect, of a, of a nation to, to move over to electromobility, they're probably one of the best place to do it. And it's costing them a vast amount of money. So uh, you know, nations like the United States or Australia or things, I mean, the, the amounts of the sums are going to be ginormous, presumably. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, as a matter of fact, Japan has almost twice as many uh, cars as uh, the UK, 78 okay. million, I, I recall, uh, compared to 40 million in the UK. And as I understand, the cars in Japan are driven almost a similar distance uh, per year to the ones in uh, in the UK. So, so say if uh, and the the population, of course, is is uh, bigger as well, uh, almost twice the size. Um, so, so probably uh, the figures calculated for Japan could be halved uh, if you get get a, a, yeah. a relevant figure for for the UK. But it's still uh, a really, really high, uh, a large amount of money, <laughs> a, a tremendous amount of money to invest in the next few decades, in the next few uh, years and decades, in order to um, uh, accomplish the transformation to um, electromobility. And so the point there was, we were exploring the United Nations um, vast number of goals, but if we just E-mobility isn't one goal. I think it's um, affordable and clean energy is is the goal they have, and also sustainable cities and communities. Um, but if we take one sort of slice of that of e-mobility, the costs for the transformation become um, a vast. And presume if we take any one of these UN goals, we can end up with numbers that are uh, very daunting. Absolutely, and. Um... You, you, as you indicate, there are uh, uh, an area like e-mobility is covered by uh, more than one goal. There's one called industry innovation and infrastructure as well, uh, which so so um, the energy aspect is covered in one goal, and and the uh, transportation aspect and and infrastructure aspect uh, is, is covered in another. So so. These goals are like are, are have been developed um, but based on ba basically um, including everything rather than focusing on the most important uh, changes. Yeah, there's no sense of prioritization, I guess, um, and maybe that's a function of 
a body like the United Nations where um, all the different countries do have different priorities and uh, how to even come up to a prioritized set without some other nation um, feeling it is uh, not a good prioritization or um, it the, the prioritization being dominated by some sort of bigger countries um, who have a loud voice or something. I, I, I guess it's, it's difficult to, to do that at that level. Yes, um, of course, a, an organization that like the UN could not um, set goals that um, go against the, the policies of any of the, their member states. So uh, uh, that would account for, for the fact that they try to include that, everything. Uh, but there, is, there are definitely aspects of this uh, transformation that are more important and should be higher prioritized than others, um, such as the transformation of, of uh, transportation and the um, uh, trans transformation of production and distribution systems. Because in, in, this, uh, in a situation where countries are facing the risk of, of um, uh, getting less oil in the future, uh, oil being uh, one of the, um, the, the uh, um, raw materials and, and fuels that is challenged um, in the future. And, and oil geologists warn that the peak in oil production could be reached uh, as early as in the next few years. And after that peak, it's possible that that uh, um, that oil production goes into permanent decline, like it has done in a number of oil producing countries, um, not least uh, the UK, Norway, and and uh, a number of other countries. Uh, they they uh, that there is a need to reduce the, the dependence on transportation and the need to reduce the um, um, and the need to increase uh, the use of other fuels than oil. Yeah, and I, um, in many science fictions, they will present scenarios where, say, oil runs out and show the sort of decline of society um, by that. Like the Mad Max films, I think, are, are based under this idea. And while uh, you know, it can seem a bit silly to, to look at science fiction, it, it, it is a good way, I think, of communicating to people what a, a future could be based on some event and um, like nuclear warfare, like what the earth could look like or uh, the lack of crops, these types of things that, uh, as a, a communication tool to the wider public. Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, but I also think that there's a risk uh, that um, if you portray a situation or, or depict a situ situation, uh, often uh, people get used to it and they get used to, to um, they, they think they understand it and, and they get less uh, alarmed by, um, by the risk or that it will become reality because they have seen pictures of it and, and they, they have seen uh, taken in accounts of, of this uh, of this development and they they may think that um, that oh we can handle this in, in some way and and um, countries already have started the transformation to to e-mobility and and the um, the news um, in the news they report on on uh, um, new car models the te tesla is is growing very rapidly and and so on and, and that that may get get people to become um complacent and and feel that it's oh it's not as dangerous as it sounds because there are already solutions on that way and and i've seen this on films many times and and one way or another um they always uh, um, get out of the um, uh, of the problems, and but in this case, um, when the uh, the decline starts to set in, it's um, we don't have the, the means of of building new transportation systems quickly uh, in the way we should. Um, 
electric cars, they're all, all only one zero point five percent of all cars that are electric um, at present, out of the one point two billion cars in in global fleets. And in the case of uh, heavy transportation and and transportation by by van and and uh, the um, the development has come uh, hasn't come as far um, it it has barely even started so we are at a very early point in this this uh, development and as the Toyota calculations indicate there is not only a need to build up more car production and, and install more charging posts. There is a need to expand power grids and invest a lot of money in, in new power generation in order to be to, to um, generate the um, electricity that we need to, uh, to fuel the um, a, a growing fleet of electric cars. So, and that will take decades to do that. And, uh, um, we can't sit here and, and be complacent and, and think that, oh, uh, the government will solve this and, uh, or the, uh, the car industry are already on track with a number of new um, electric car models uh, because, because um, uh, the development hasn't come as far as many people believe it has. So what do you think is, um, what advice would you give to people? So we're, we're now right at the beginning of 2021. Uh, people are setting their goals out for the next year or few years. Either they they lead a small team or as an individual. Like what, what advice could you give people who they, they recognize the problem that you're talking about and they want to contribute, but are not so really sure how? Well, I, I, give the advice that um, um, they need to, to learn more and they need to, uh, to discuss with, with friends and the colleagues and, and get increase the awareness of, uh, of this situation and, and make sure that um, um, a lot of, of the, the relevant numbers are, are uh, getting into the, the public debate in uh, in the media and, and in uh, um, at work uh, discussions with with colleagues that uh, there are 40 million uh, uh, cars in the UK and uh, that uh, that there's a need for for the power equivalent of some 20 nuclear reactors in order to uh, um, generate the electricity to to uh, power um, the car fleet and that there's a need for approximately the same number of, of nuclear reactors to power uh, the um, uh, heavy transportation and, and uh, light light trucks and, and vans and buses and so on. Uh, so and these are fairly simple simple data. It's it's really easy to learn and I'm I'm really happy to support in various ways with with uh, facts and uh, and um, providing uh, arguments and and uh, discussing with people uh, because I, I think it's it's the only way um, to do this to for for people to to start to learn and for people to to influence at first one another and then get together and try to influence. Um, media, get journalists to write about these things, and um, as, a, as a result, get politicians to take this, this challenge seriously and, and really try to understand um, the, the numbers and the, uh, the set of activities and investment that need to be made in order to um, uh, drive the transformation forward at higher speed. But it sounds like if people are looking for new opportunities for their, for their business or their career, that actually there are um, huge opportunities here for people with the right skills and um, capabilities. I totally agree. Yes, um, definitely. And if governments need to be, be serious about this, because it 
the uh, uh, the problem with um, um, the um, oil supply, oil production is not going to go, go away. We don't know exactly when when uh, the decline will start to um, uh, will start, but we will. We know that it it will uh, happen in the next few years, and uh, um, and so governments need to take this seriously, and and they need to to promote uh, the establishment and the um, expansion of uh, electric electro mobility systems in various ways, and companies need to make these those investments. Um, so um, so there will be. Uh, a huge um, labor market opening up for for various types of of new um, uh, roles in uh, uh, electromobility, in in building uh, uh, car fleets, uh, car sharing systems, um, building infrastructure, electric roads, um, roads with with um, uh, electric tracks uh, that that can uh, that. Can allow cars to charge uh, or while they are driving, and, and so on. There will be a, a large number of, of um, different um, investments that will be needed in order to um, in order to go through with this uh, um, change. And I guess people can also, because there's a lot of talk after COVID, the sort of economic shock and economic uncertainty due to um, certain types of businesses doing very badly due to COVID. So travel industry, restaurants, these types of things. But there is this huge demand potentially for all this infrastructure you're talking about. So if people are looking to career change into anything that supports this, seems sensible. Yes. And I might even add that a lot of people they're like, oh, so I want to build electric cars, so I have to work for an electric car company. But often you can do something which is uh, adjacent to it and will be later become it. So working for a conventional car company will probably put you in a good place for working on electric cars when that becomes the um, the the default of what they do. Absolutely. Uh, and th there's a, a big need for experts in the various areas related to to this transformation it's not only electromobility but in this in the area of electromobility there will be a number of different areas uh, that need to, to um, be built up and new technologies that need to be, be adopted and expanded like electric roads charging infra infrastructure um, smart grid technologies but Countries also, in the face of in the face of declining oil production, countries also need to reduce their um, dependence on uh, transportation overall. So um, th there will be a need in various ways to uh, to change other things as well, um, to increase the share of local production, regional production uh, of primarily. Um, Necessi necessi necessities of life, um, like your food, um, clothes, um, medicines, and not uh, not least the um, uh, um, spare parts for for society's critical infrastructure, like water, sewage, and uh, um, um, for. Um, Digital infrastructures, for example. So, so there are a number of areas that need that where a large investment will be needed, and where where countries countries and companies need to focus their activities in the next few years. Yeah, and so if you are making your goals for the next five years or so, taking on board this conversation, I think should be very helpful and. I guess the other piece is get specific, get um, those high level UN goals are are too high level or too ambiguous to apply directly to what you're up to. But uh, you can zoom in on anything and 
make it very concrete and then actually have an impact on, on what you're doing. Um, so Matt, I mean, do you have anything else to add on, on this topic? Yes, yeah, yes, I, I'd like to say in general that that um, it's having a set of goals like uh, the UN goals could be uh, detrimental to to the development. It it sounds as if it's it's a uh, it's a good idea to to uh, uh, launch this uh, a set of 17 goals that covers almost everything but um, um, they basically uh, give every one of us a carte blanche to to do anything that's related to sustainability it, and and it takes fo it, it takes our attention away from the areas uh, and from the needs that we need to focus on so um, i i I'm not so happy about these uh, um, th these various goals uh, by the UN, or or uh, to a lesser degree, of course, uh, the 10-point plan. Uh, countries need, uh, and the the, uh, uh, the world at large uh, needs to uh, to uh, uh, develop strategies and decide which activities they want to prioritize. In, in the near future, and in order to uh, um, in order to build uh, sustainable societies and to to um, uh, promote the areas of development that are most important for them, not pursue a, a widespread set of goals that that uh, aren't likely to lead anywhere. And for that prioritization. Where, where should people turn or are they going to have to prioritize themselves for now or um i think at present there are not enough guidelines available i've tried to uh, to outline um to set guidelines and, and to give um to write a handbook uh, for for change leaders, um, young and old, uh, as I call call it in the subtitle of my book, uh, the blind guardians of ignorance: COVID nineteen sustainability and our vulnerable future. Um, so in that book, I try to to set guidelines and uh, and provide some ideas um, of how we could uh, uh, approach. Um, strategy development prioritization and, and how we could build on on uh, building blocks that are already available in in countries um but uh, and then there, there's the calculations by by toyota about uh, about um, the implementation of uh, electromobility as uh, similar uh, but not as uh, extensive perhaps uh, calculations by uh, the organization Danish Energy for the situation in Denmark, um, for, for, for how, how much needs to be invested in, in the expansion of um, uh, power grids to fuel or, or to charge one million electric cars and so on. Uh, th there are these scattered uh, initiatives uh, to, to um, develop um, Guidelines and and to to capture uh, the the complexity and the scale of the transformation, but there there is no overall um, overall set of guidelines except I believe uh, it's fair to say my own book. Great. Well, I think they should uh, go and buy your book then and and use it to to guide uh, their own goal setting. Uh, if they want to have an impact on this important topic. Yes, um, may, I, may I say, if if uh, um, someone finds another text or some other expert who has done something similar, I'd love to come in, uh, get in contact with him or her and and to continue this dis discussion because I, I don't think it's a good idea that uh, Different people develop everything on their own, uh, and and develop their own own set of of um, 
priorities guidelines. I think to a much larger extent than, than what's done today, uh, we need to collaborate and we need to um, uh, discuss and we need to uh, find identify the most viable ways forward and how we, how we can can achieve the best results or the b biggest results uh, with the, at the smallest possible cost or and at the smallest cost possible effort and investment yes yeah that makes sense so um if, yeah if anyone does come across materials or other researchers um who've looked into what this prioritization of the goals could be do get out, uh, reach out to Matt. Uh, Matt, how should people contact you? Well, they could send me an email. Um, Matt's at getinstitute.com, G-E-T institute D.com. Okay, great. Um, and so Matt, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I, I think I've, I've um, said the most, the things that that are closest to my heart at present great great well it was great to speak to you Matt, again and i encourage everyone to uh read matt's book the blind guardians of ignorance if you look um on the video you'll see the cover page of the uh the book the book cover uh, which is is quite interesting it's got um these um i guess politicians or leaders around a, a map of the earth but uh, sadly, they are blindfolded, so they cannot see the uh, the uh, the city behind them is about to be engulfed into um, some kind of uh, terrible weather, terrible storm ahead. Uh, so, Matt, it was great to speak to you as ever, and um, uh, I wish you a, a happy new year, happy 2021. Thank you very much, Joshua. I, I wish the same to you. Thank you.